What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and in this video I want to address four reasons why I think Tesla is still the king of EVs. Over the last couple of weeks I've been reflecting on all of the amazing experiences that I've had in 2019 and there have been a ton of them. I've had the opportunity to look at several handfuls of EVs over the last nine months including the Jaguar I-PACE, the Audi e-tron, the Porsche Taycan, BMW i3, Chevy Bolt, Rivian R1T and R1 S, as well as the Bollinger B1 and B2. I've also had an amazing opportunity to sit down one-on-one -on -one with some very influential people in the EV industry, like Sandy Monroe, who runs Sandy Monroe and Associates. I was there at his one-day electric car conference with Gally from Hyperchange. I also had a chance to sit down with Jeff Don, who is the lead researcher for Tesla. Robbie Campaya, who is a doctor in nanomaterials that go into batteries. Robert Bollinger, of course, who runs Bollinger Motors. RJ Scaringe, who runs Rivian, as well as a yet published one-on-one -on -one interview with the CEO of Porsche North America, Klaus Zellmer. All of these experiences this year with these vehicles and these thought leaders in the industry has led me to one resounding thought, which is that Tesla is still the king of EVs. So I wanna to touch on these four topics that Tesla is leading the way on. And I think that other automakers who aspire to create an electric vehicle that people covet and desire. The first one is Tesla's battery pack. For those that follow Tesla closely, you know that they have an industry leading battery pack. And there are three things that really stand out to me about their battery pack. Number one is leading range for the price. Up and down Tesla's vehicle offering, they are literally the market leader in terms of range, period, as well as range for the price. You've got the Model S that has at the moment 370 miles of range, the Model X at 325, as well as the Model 3 at 310 miles of range. And that's not to mention all of their pending vehicles that will soon come to market like the Model Y, the Tesla semi-truck, the Tesla Roadster, and more than likely, though we don't know the actual range of it, the Tesla pickup truck. All of these offerings are far are better in terms of range than anything else that's on the market and soon to come on the market, with the exception of maybe Rivian. This is primarily due to Tesla keeping their R&D for batteries, cells, and cell chemistry in-house, which is different from what every other automaker on the market who's making an EV does today, which is outsource their battery tech to companies like LG and Panasonic. And that is a really big reason why Tesla has the lowest cost per mile battery pack in the market. Market. In fact, when I went to this one-day conference that Sandy Monroe put on at his office in Detroit earlier this year, he broke these things down. He assigned a dollar amount to each battery pack of each electric vehicle that he tore down. And as to no surprise, Tesla came out the winner when you took the range that the battery pack offered with the cost that it took to build that pack. The last reason why Tesla has an industry-leading battery pack is because they've developed this unique architecture for the battery pack. In fact, almost every other EV on the market right now is using these pouch or prism style cells. They're larger, which means that there's less redundancy in these battery packs if, for example, one of the pouch cells in a Taycan goes bad. The next area that Tesla's leading the way on with electric vehicles is their motors, their electric motors. And now we see this permanent magnet motor in every single single vehicle that they sell on their website to date, the Model 3, Model S, and Model X. And there's some interesting findings that I discovered when I attended this one-day conference at Sandy Monroe's office earlier this year. Sandy Monroe shared that in their chemical breakdown of the permanent magnet motor, they discovered that the magnets that are in there have a superior magnetic conductivity. And when you drill down and magnify Tesla's magnet versus competitors in the automotive industry, there is far better density of of magnetism in that Tesla magnet. The other thing that I found interesting is that there is no cooling jacket for the gearbox housing to keep this electric motor cooled. And what they've done is that they've built the transmission fluid into the electric motor and therefore reducing cost and weight into this electric motor. And according to Sandy Monroe's research, they say that the motor sits inside the gearbox housing which allows coolant to flow around the outside of the motor. 
He says that there is no cooling jacket. Rather, the gearbox housing has cast-in inlets and outlets to allow the transmission oil to move around the motor. He says that the elimination of the cooling jacket is not only cost savings, it also reduces the size of the gearbox housing. The integration of the coolant passages eliminates hoses and clamps and may provide a reduction in potential leaks. All of this leads to a lighter and more efficient motor that produces more horsepower than the competitors electric motors. The third way that Tesla is leading the way with electric vehicles is their software. And if you own a Tesla, you know exactly what I mean. They are the only automaker on the market currently that I know of that truly has full vehicle over the air software updates. Now, some of these other vehicles that are mean by traditional automakers do have internet connected capabilities and can receive software updates over the air, but they are extremely limited. A really good example of this was back in June, Jaguar sent out a recall for their regenerative braking for their iPACE. They said that it would be a software update, but not an over-the-air software update like many Tesla owners are used to. In fact, these owners had to take their vehicle actually into a dealership to get that software update. So Tesla can push out a software update over the air almost immediately for anything that's tied to software or electronics, which is basically everything in the car. This allows for Tesla to move quickly and improve the vehicle quickly, especially when it's tied to a safety issue. This brings me to my second point with Tesla software. They are incredibly nimble in innovating and iterating on their software on a weekly and monthly basis. This means that Tesla owners will receive new features to their cars on a regular basis like new video games, the ability to stream YouTube and Netflix from the screen, as well as improvements to their autopilot functionality. Speaking of autopilot, software and over-the-air software updates allows Tesla to iterate and improve on their autopilot stack on a regular basis, even if you bought the car two and three years ago, you're getting a better product today than when you bought that car originally. One of the things that I think will be an incredibly strategic move when we look back at autopilot 10 years from today is Tesla's ability to train this neural net, this artificial intelligence to improve and learn based on the fleet of vehicles that are on the road. This is centered around software. It's artificial intelligence software that's, that's learning from how drivers drive, taking that image recognition and teaching the rest of the fleet how to drive autonomously. No other automaker to date can say that they have that advanced of a neural net or artificial intelligence that is improving that autonomous suite. The last reason why I think Tesla is still the king of EVs is their self-driving tech. Not just the software piece, but also the hardware piece. One example of this is Tesla's integrated approach to thermal control systems for low voltage semi-autonomous hardware. When I was at that Sandy Monroe one day conference, Sandy Monroe expounded upon this and he compared what Tesla was doing to other automakers in the the ability for Tesla to be able to take advanced technology, advanced circuit boards, cool them with coolant and allow them to process more information, not only faster, but better and maintain that optimal temperature for those circuit boards. Traditional automakers are not doing that and have not yet integrated that cooling system for low voltage systems. One of the other stark differences between Tesla and traditional automakers making EVs is the density of their circuit boards. In fact, he compared Tesla's circuit boards to things that he's seen in in the defense space where he also consults. He compared it to a fighter jet of today or a missile defense system. Tesla has the leading best hardware in the automotive industry and maybe in the world, period. And the last point I'll make about their self-driving tech is Tesla's ability to develop in-house this autonomous chip, which we learned in detail about earlier this summer of 2019. Though Tesla's software in their vehicles has not caught up with this new chip, I think that we'll begin to see how this is a very strategic move, not only giving Tesla the ability to customize software that fits the hardware, but also to develop the hardware that is far superior than anything else on the market. In summary, I've had a wonderful opportunity to see some amazing electric cars from various automakers, as well as sit down with some influential people in the electric vehicle industry. And this is all led me to believe that Tesla is still the king of electric 
vehicles in the electric vehicle market, despite all the criticisms that they do get, they are doing some really key things right. And this puts them probably three to five years ahead of their competition. And perhaps maybe with this Maxwell acquisition, five to eight years ahead. And so congratulations and well done to Tesla, the Tesla team, Elon Musk, and everyone tied to Tesla. That hard work, that dedication shows, and you all have single-handedly moved the auto industry towards electrification. I don't think that if Tesla was so far ahead, we would see some of these electric cars from some of these other automakers. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I put a lot of love into it. If you enjoyed it and you're a first time to my channel, please consider subscribing. If you're a regular, one of the best ways that you can support me and low cost ways is to hit the like button. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see everyone on on the next video.